My name is Julian Johns. I work for Converse Social, which is a play on the words of social conversation. So, um, and we're very pleased to be here. Um, had a number of customers uh, with us last night, including um, Alad Irish Bank, Aer Lingus, among others, who, who, use our, who use our platform. So, what we're talking about today is almost the flip side of the coin of everything you've heard about so far. You're building great campaigns using social and all those other platforms, using Facebook as a way to get your customers to your products, services, your brand. And as a result, you're generating lots and lots and lots of interest. Um, Cadbury's, for example, is a, uh, not one of our customers, but they have a, a great history of using uh, Facebook as a way of driving people to their website and their products. So they have to sell 16 million eggs in 12 weeks. And they did it this year, not using any form of TV or radio or anything, just purely, essentially through Facebook. And they're getting TV equivalent figures uh, just using Facebook. And I don't know how many marketers here think that CSAT or NPS is important. They don't care about that. They care about the Nielsen by preferential index. And for two years running, it was minus nine. And then this year, it was plus nine. So, they're seriously very, very good at using Facebook, in this case, to drive interest. However, what happens is when it comes back into you. So we're a platform that will help you take all of that inbound noise, interest, comments, posts, anything, and help you deal with it effectively. So you spend all this money on your campaigns, engaging with your customers, making sure that they say the right things, hear the right things. And Commerce Soldier is a platform that you can use within your environment to filter all that noise and has a whole host of things that will help you, help you, help you do that. Here's some stats um, which are interesting. Um, but here's some interesting stuff based on the stats that we have on our platform around our Facebook. I hope you can see the, see the colors all right. Um, we've had 234 million Facebook messages across all of our customers in the last year. Based on the, our customer data, the busiest day is Tuesday on Facebook. Um, with consumers most active between 2 p.m. and 9 p.m., with a peak at 9.30 p.m. And it is the most dominant customer service channel over and above Twitter, based on our data. If you're doing, if you're doing anything on, on a Sunday, that's the lowest engagement score, uh, which is why some, some people get a really quick response on Twitter or Facebook, maybe two or three minute response time, because there's nothing else going on. Um, so there are some interesting stats there. So, there is a risk, of course, with, with social, and we, we know that, we understand that there's a lot of the business risk, which is, for example, uh, you're an airline company, you're offering new flights from, let's say, uh, Dublin to Turkey, and you're saying, great offer. Somebody can tweet, say, great location, but it's very expensive, for example. There's native social risk, so if people are actively out there trolling you, trying to, to bring you down as a brand, or just, just they just don't like you. And last but not least, brand risk, campaign risk. You've all heard the McDonald's campaign where they were asked to tweet an experience at McDonald's and somebody tweeted uh, a Happy Meal with a, a plaster in it. So, you know, it's, you've got to manage that. And I, I like this picture. I, I always think this is what marketeers think that they're doing against the, the world of social. They're, they're defending the, the, the brand of this, this knight in shining armour against this dragon of, of social. Um, because it is there, it's big, it's, it, it, it can get messy, and people can get burned. So, the, there are opportunities. Clearly, you know this in terms of how you want to extend your, uh, your brand, minimizing transaction barriers, and um, also brand quality. So, you're doing that on the outbound. You're creating this message, this, this, this vibe, this feeling about your brand on the outbound. And so, what I wanted to do, give some examples of customers who, and how they're using social, for their customers and finding out where their customers are going and how they can respond to what their customers are doing. Added Irish Bank um, is an interesting one. I, I brought this up because for the finance sector, it's heavily regulated. But customers are going onto social and are still asking the same questions that they would be either on phone or chat or email, but they're now doing it on Twitter. So how do they respond? What do they do? So as a channel, they, they have Ask AIB, for example, which has 50,000 likes. And an average 700 incoming messages per month. They have, I think, a team of two or three looking after the, this channel for them. And they, they realized that by using the 
the inbound messages effectively, they can respond in a way they can never do so before. So there's no point having this great service, no, this great campaign, this great awareness program. And so what they've been able to do um, very effectively is look at their Facebook responses, improve their response times to most, sometimes within less than half an hour across their finance customers. While still, and the story, of course, behind this, boy, great, um, if you can see this, uh, is, is they're coping with that shift of their customer base to social. So we have other customers in the finance sector, such as Nationwide here, Barclay Card, who, who realise that it's very hard to be able to talk about all the policies and, and, and safeguards in 140 characters or in a Facebook post or things like that. So they're, but they're taking that plunge because that's where the customers are going. Taking a move away from finance and into the telco space, the telco space is, is, a, is, a, is a huge one for, for social because it does offer, not necessarily, uh, it doesn't replace an email or a voice or a chat channel, it's additive at the moment. But Tigo is a large Latin American telco. They have this one particular, uh, they have one Facebook page with 617,000 likes, with 14,000 incoming posts and comments and private messages per month, which require 9,000 responses. So from one end of the spectrum with AIB with their 700 to this side of the spectrum, the same technology, the same platform, being able to manage all that inbound that's coming in for you. And then the results, again, it's all around in the, in the early stages, how quick can you respond and can you respond effectively using whatever workflow tools or security you've got in the platform. <laughs> Why it, it works in Latin America for a number of reasons. They have a high propensity to talk so, socially more than any other uh, country, in, including Spain. It's simpler for a customer to tweet and then walk away from that tweet rather than make a phone call. If you make a phone call, you have to, you have to bide your time on an IVR, for example, and go, OK, I want option four, or is it three? If I press hash a lot of the time, I get to speak to someone. Whereas with a tweet, you just push it out there, and then they have to get back to you. And it's much cheaper compared to a voice channel or a chat channel or an email channel. In fact, they've done the brave move of actually zero rating uh, Twitter for all of their customers under the age of 25. So um, another example, moving in more into, um, let's say you're a brand with multiple lines of business, for example. So Haven Holidays, they have 35 holiday parks, and each holiday park has its own Facebook channel. It has roughly 94,000 likes on its main Facebook page, but they, as a brand, as you can see, I, I put up how it's been owned. The publicity team actually own the overall brand with all these 35 channels in, one, in their queues, but there, it's been resourced in the contact center. And I was going to give an example of, of one of the themes around why, why it's been successful for them is around conversations. It's a two-way dialogue, essentially, with your social customer. We have a lady here commenting on Facebook and wants to make sure that this particular venue has water slides, which is always a must-have. A great response. And then we see this response. Now, if you're responding with outside, outside of uh, a, a conversational, you have no idea what the context of that conversation is. Essentially, if you're responding direct to me as a customer, to you, I only get to see your comments traditionally. However, what we are able to do is, if you can see this, within the platform, show other responses to that original comment, not made by Haven, but made by other people. So the community around your, your brand, the community that uses your brand, responding for you. So when you then respond to them, you can now see this. You can see, oh, look, somebody says that the, that the water slides have been shut. You can see the context of the conversation. So that when you respond, you can say, actually, they will be open. And this, this happens all the time. If you're, if you're posting out messages, particularly if you're asking for customer information or your delivery, for example, and you say, my delivery hasn't arrived, and I'm the agent, I then disappear, but I've asked for delivery order number. I go on holiday, because, you know, service agents go on holiday a lot. And somebody else takes over that queue. They don't have to ask the same question again, because the context of that conversation is within the platform. So you know, about, you know more about the customer. You know who they are, what they are, what they said, why they said it, when they come into your queue. 
So it makes it very, very relevant. Taking all this in, into, into context, then once you've done all the outbound and you want to manage all that social inbound, we mentioned before actually from uh, the other company, response times. Now, with the customers last night, um, this varies by vertical, it varies by country, it also varies by maturity in that vertical of people dealing with social. This is, a, this is a feedback that we did from our own customers, but there's a very good one that Gartner did, the Gartner, uh, from the Gartner CRM event in London earlier this year, which is definitely worth reading and downloading, where you were looking at what people think they should get a response time compared to what the industry thinks they should do. So for steps for success, understand how quickly your customers need a response. Know the challenges. If you're starting on, this, on the social, managing your inbound journey, or you're even a first steps, the marketing team can't do everything. In the same way when email and chat came along, it was let go into the contact center with all the right controls, because that's their experience at managing irate customers. The volumes are increasing. If the volumes are increasing, and you've got maybe four people looking after social, you are gonna get your response times a lot lower. Somebody scored. Uh, <laughs> Than, than they should be. Social is very disruptive. Mentioned earlier on, somebody mentioned earlier, Air France and KLM. They won an award recently for best use of social media for a number of reasons. They have de siloed their support organization because of social. So, what they've done is anybody who does, manages the inbound on social are now called customer experience directors. There's 11 of them, I kid you not. They then sit, they, they seen as the aspirational group within Air France KLM, within the contact center team. And they then had direct access to what they then call ambassadors, who are people who are luggage, lost luggage query, ticketing query, seat query, travel hotel booking, delayed flights, everything. So within a click, they can send this person, the let's say lost luggage person, within the platform, I've got this customer, lost luggage, ticket reference is this, that ambassador can then respond directly using their tweet handle or the, tweet handle of, uh, the, the handle of Air France KLM. And the other thing that we're seeing, even on the very small scale uh, social inbound, is collaboration between marketing, IT, and operations. It's the, one of the first times ever where marketing still own the brand, the messaging, the way to communicate, the how to communicate, but the platforms aren't necessarily there yet or they haven't been bought yet, and operations. So this is a new kind of... Uh, way that companies are working together. The next step, if you haven't written down what you think your social customer service strategy is, write it down. You won't get it right first time, but write it down. Because unless you write it down, you won't know what your goals are. It sounds very basic, but for example, this is what Gartner thinks a social customer service strategy should be. Active, so humans, real-time, bi-directional social relationships, with consumers rather than just to consumers. And it just changes the way that people think of service and support. It's no longer get them on the phone, get them off the phone, job done. It's an ongoing, because it's out there. It's not one-to-one -one anymore. It's out there in the social sphere. Another thing to look at, understand where you are in your social maturity. This is our idea of the social maturity model, where uh, as you evolve and move through understanding where social sits. And it is different, but it's also the same. This is where, these are the stages that we are hoping our customers go through. So to give you an, an example, um, Barclay Card, essentially they were at the participate stage a year and a half ago with two to three licenses, seats of Converse Social. They're now moving more towards the engage stage, so they've now got 35 seats of, social, of Converse Social in their social service centre purely on the credit card <laughs> side. And so they take that step because it's cheaper, it's quicker, and it's where the customers are moving to. The other thing, of course, is that it, every single phone in the world has these apps on. They don't need to go to the website to complain. They don't need to go onto your website and go to chat or find the right email address. They can even just put the wrong hashtag and go hashtag Barclay Card, or even at Barclay Card, and you can still pick that up. Because only 5 or 7% of customers actually use the right at handle anyway. So there's a number of steps that they're, that they're now taking to help them move, particularly with compliance and, re and, the, and the regulatory framework. Like existing channels, social can fit easily. 
Uh, hopefully no one runs a, has a contact center like that anymore. But it can fit very easily and alongside your email, your chat, uh, and your other non-voice platforms using the same kind of metrics. One of the things that you will see is if you rely on NPS or CSAT as a way to judge or even level of effort score, or net easy as I think BT calls it, you will be able to judge across all these channels now where am I going to most effectively put my resources for dealing with, let's say, an order issue or a billing issue. If I know I can fix that quicker and cheaper on social, on Facebook, why would I put the money in chat or voice? And you can resource accordingly now, because you can get these scores. Average handling time for dealing with a billing issue on email, six hours. Let's say t Facebook, t two hours maybe, half an hour if you're that good. And that's it.